This is one video in a series of videos that show how to use Oracle Apex 5 to build a working web application, a prototype. It won't be fully featured, but it'll be a working application that uses a database in Oracle XE. There are earlier video series in YouTube um, for previous versions of Apex. You can work along with the video by getting the scripts that are available at the URL shown here. Be sure and uh, make the URL case sensitive, so put a capital D, not a lowercase d. You can also, as an alternative, request the scripts be emailed by going to the second link and using the contact page to request the scripts. I'm logged in as Ashwini, and Ashwini is going to create some views. A view is based on SQL, and it is often used to combine information across two or more tables in a format that's user-friendly and can be very uh, helpful in a report format. So we're going to go to SQL Workshop and Object Browser and select in the upper right corner create or add and we'll add a view. So this view is going to be for students and teams. So I give it a name and I'm putting V in front of it just to make it sort along with other views. Sometimes you'll get a list from Apex that won't clearly distinguish a table from a view so putting a naming convention like this in place can be helpful. I'm not going to write the SQL directly. I will use Query Builder to do this. Query Builder is going to give us a graphical interface for building our SQL statement. I'm going to select from the left side panel. This is for students and teams. I'll select students and it will show up over in the right hand side. I'll select workshop and I can move these around if I want to and I'm going to make this a little smaller. It's important to know if you're not familiar with working with tables in a database that when you have more than one table in a query, in a view, you must join every table to at least one other table. If you don't do that you're going to get uh, junk as output. So how do these tables connect? Well, they don't because I accidentally picked the wrong thing. So I'll pick teams. And now, what's the connection between students and teams? It's going to be student team ID to team ID. So not always, but almost always, the relationship or connection between the tables will be from primary key to foreign key field. The next thing that you want to do is select what you want to see. So check the fields that you want to include. I'm picking student ID, user ID, first name, last name, and then over here I'll pick team ID and uh, team name. Now I can test this for output to see if it's what I want at any point by clicking results. I also have a section down here where I can come in and replace the field name with an alias, so I could do student ID. I'll pause the video while I type these in. So I've changed the alias for each one to use upper and lower case and not have abbreviations. I've also come over to the sort order and I've said I want to sort by team ID and then by last name and then by first name. I can run this as I said to test the output to see if it's what I'm looking for and then when I'm finished, if I need to come back, I can make modifications to the conditions or add another field. But when I'm finished, I click Return. Then I click Next and click Create View. Notice that we're looking at views as opposed to tables. So in the object browser, in this situation, the views are listed separately. I want to go ahead and create a separate view and I'll do view workshop attendance. 
go to Query Builder, I will select Workshop, and I will select Attendances, and I will select Students. So I want to see the workshop name, just the name. I don't actually want anything from Attendances, but I have to have it because the way to connect student information to workshops is through this intermediate table or associative entity or uh, associative table. So I need to connect these. I'm going to, by the way, show student user ID, first name, last name. Let's see, actually I think I'll do student ID, take that off, and show team ID. I've got to make the relationship or the connection between these tables. They cannot stay in the query without having a connection. So it's workshop ID to the foreign key, attendance workshop ID. It's student ID to attendance student ID. Again, I'll pause the video and modify my aliases. I'm going to click return. I'm not going to click results and look at the output. I'll just go with return and create that view. Again, back in Object Browser, we have some of the same tabs that you see when you look at tables. So I'm looking at the construction of the view, which are the columns. I can also go to data and see the output when the view is run, when the, the query or the SQL that, that creates that view is executed. I'm going to create another view and actually on this one, let me come back here for a second and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine these two tables together. First though, I'm going to create a view that gives us our evaluator, then I'm going to create a view that gives us our evaluatee. So coming back to create a view, I'm going to start by creating a view for evaluator. So it'll be v underscore evaluators, and I'll go to my query builder. I will select student and evaluations. And so it's important that I pick the right foreign key, student ID connected to evaluator ID. I want to see I want to see student ID, first name, last name, team ID, and eval ID. I will use the uh, I will modify the aliases and then I will create this view. I did make sure that in my alias I specified not something generic like student ID but that this is the evaluator ID, the student ID for someone doing the evaluation. So that's going to be important when we combine these views together for a report. I'll go ahead and click return and create or create that yeah, create that view and I'm going to go right back in and create one for evaluate T. I'm going into the query builder and I will again use students and evaluations but this time they are joined differently student ID to evaluate TID I want to see student ID first name last name and I don't need the team ID again because the students are on the same team and I have that ID or field in the other view if I want it I do need eval ID again so I will come down here and do evaluate and I will continue to modify the aliases indicating that this is for the evaluatee. I'll pause the video for that. So I've come back to the view wizard. I'll click next and create. And I see my column headings based on my aliases. Now I'm going to combine those two views with the evaluations table and eval item scores. So this is going to be a more complex view. So I click view to create 
This will be V underscore evaluation data. It's a little bigger. And notice over here on the left hand side, I hadn't pointed it out before, but we are seeing the views that we created in, in conjunction with the tables. So now I want to select evaluatees or evaluators. It doesn't really matter which one I select first. And then I want to select evaluation. And I'm going to put those two together, uh, put evaluation between those two visually to see that it is the it is the intermediate table that connects an evaluator to an evaluatee. And I will also add the eval item scores. And I'm going to bring it down here so it won't be completely visible. Now I need to start putting these together. How did they go together? I have my evaluatees here and I connect that to evaluations through eval ID. So this is actually an example where we're not using a foreign key, an official foreign key. And I will take a val ID and also connect it to a val ID for evaluators. I will also connect a val ID as the primary key to its foreign key in a val item scores. So a val ID is the link among common link among all of these tables. So I've selected from the views and tables the columns I want to see from evaluatee evaluations all I need are the eval ID and the semester and year evaluators the ID first name last name I want the eval item ID and score from eval item scores I'll make a few modifications here to the aliases and then I will create this view and I'll pause the video while I do that so I now have evaluation data it has many fields and I can go to the data tab to actually see the data combining the names of the students that are doing the evaluation with the student being evaluated and the items being scored in the evaluation. I'm going to use these views in the application as the basis for some reports and I want to create a report here using the classic format so I'll select report and I will type in this will be student and teams and I'm not going to make a breadcrumb I'll just go ahead and click next I will make a new navigation entry and then I will select the view so I select student teams for the view, click next. I'm not changing any of this, taking the defaults, and I'm going to create that. When I run the application and I open up that student and teams report, this is what I see. This is the classic report. It gives you by default a download option so I could click that and, do, and download that in a CSV format that I could open up with Excel or some other software. It's not as fully featured as the interactive report which we're going to do next. I just wanted to compare the two formats. There are some situations where this simpler output is preferable to the interactive report. But in general, if I'm creating a report, I would use the interactive report because of all the nice built-in interactivity features for uh, adding, grouping, filtering that are built into the report itself. So I'm going to go back to the application and do Create Page, and let's do an interactive report, which is the default option when you click that. And on this one, we're going to do workshops and attendance and I'll just click next that means let's see I think I missed something here yeah I do want to create a navigation item and then I need to select my view 
and that would be workshops and attendance. So the big difference is we've got things that we can automatically filter with. So I could type in active and get the students in workshops that have the, has the word active. I could eliminate that and I could type in effective. And then I see workshops that have the word effective in them. I could go to actions. I'm going to do control break. I'm going to select workshop and apply and I get a breakdown with workshop and then the list of students. I could go back to actions and I could do aggregate and say I want to count and the column I want to count will be student ID and I could apply that. So now I'm getting a grouping in more of a report format uh, with the header for the workshop and then a count of the students for that workshop. You can undo what you've customized the report for by clicking Actions and Reset, and it'll take you back to the original view. While I had the video paused, I went ahead and created another interactive report for evaluation data. So you might want to do that so that what I'm showing you looks like what you have. But we have evaluation data in an interactive report. In the next video, we're going to look at creating a master detail form with an additional detail section.